<clears throat> Hello. All right. Got another stream going. I think this is day seven. Let me double check. What's today's tape? I'm tired. Uh, you're probably tired of hearing that. Um, but I'm excited too. Yeah, it's the seventh. Nice. A week. That, so, you know, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. 31 days in the month. Uh, seven. That's a good chunk. It's a good chunk. It's a few people joining us. Let's see. Uh, pathetic Spider Boy. Hello. Uh, Ghost Dog. Nice to see you back. Janice Price. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. That's really nice. Hmm. Here, let's see. I'm going to have some dinner. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. That's my impression of eating a cheeseburger. Hello, Software Agents TV and Emmanuel E. It's lovely. It's so nice to have several of you in here today. So, uh, today's prompt was exhausted. And I believe it was somebody in this very chat room yesterday who suggested a transformer. It was in exhaust. I love that idea. Uh, oh, thanks for sharing my latest video software. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's see. So, uh, Spider Boy says he saw the Venom movie and it was amazing. And Janice says I'm eating chicken Alfredo. So, that's, um, that's the key stuff going on in the chat room. Very important stuff. Uh, glad that we're all up to date on what everybody has seen and what they've eaten. Um, let's, uh, without any real further ado, let's, let's get started on this, this drawing. And you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and use a brush pen for some of the outer outline areas. And, uh, then I'll probably use a lot of technical pens for the details, uh, but then I'll probably have to go back to some sort of a, a brush for inking in a lot of black areas, because I've spotted a, a fair amount of blacks on this piece. Um, because if I didn't, then there'd be even more detail, and that would have been annoying. Uh, um, I read that Hulk Venom crossover a few months ago, says Software Agents TV. Oh, hi, Kiro. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, that was, that was bad. That was just flat out bad. How important was Terry Austin's inking to John Byrne's career? It's an interesting question, SS. Uh, he definitely benefited from it, but, uh... You know, Bur Burn was talented, and he would have probably found a lot of success no matter what. But, uh, yeah, he benefited from a good inker right off the bat. There's no question. Good, uh, good idea, though, for, for sort of a topic or question is, uh, you know, like, what... What writers or artists have benefited from an early collaboration in their career? They were just paired with the right person to get them to that next level. I bet that there's a lot of successful people in comics that benefited from being able to team up with uh, a really talented person right off the bat. Or at least early on. And that's not to take success away from anybody. Just saying that uh, nobody really uh, operates in a vacuum, right? Hello, J. Andrew World. Let's see. Do you work with any medium outside of pen and pencil? I've never seen you use watercolor or acrylics and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I frequently will draw digitally and color and, and draw in Photoshop. Um, with a with a tablet, I, I do enjoy that quite a bit. Um, I will um, I do a little bit of painting, not a lot. I mostly work in um, yeah acrylics, uh, so I do have some of that. Um, don't know. They've got like one small sort of painting over 
in the other corner. But, you know, let, let's focus on this, I guess, uh, and, and see where today goes. But uh, I've done a little bit of painting just to sort of experiment and learn. My favorite tools are pencil and ink. How's everybody's uh, weekend go? Anything uh, fun or unique happen? Let me know. Let each other know. Maybe it'll uh, inspire a story or something. <clears throat> Can you do Spider-Man 2099? Uh, I assume I could. Um, what did I miss? Uh, I missed a few things. Sorry. Painting is fun. I wish I had a more private space because when I paint, it's emotional. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, for me, it, it's it's a little more just sort of technical. I, I I don't I don't get too experimental with uh, what I do painting wise. I just don't feel that I have that level of uh, aptitude yet. I suppose is a way of looking at it. Um, my fiance is a painter, and she's quite good and so for a long time that sort of intimidated me from even attempting anything but the tools were always there and uh, she's not a judgmental person so eventually I started playing around with uh, some of the extra brushes and paints that were lying around and uh, it is kind of fun it's it's a different experience and uh, it's an it I, I like the results uh, so yeah Done a little of that. Wouldn't say that I'm especially good, but I do enjoy do it, uh, painting a little bit. Yeah. So just trying to block out the uh, key body parts first, and then we'll uh, move on from there to sort of getting some of the important key details down. John Byrne's own inking was based on Terry Austin's delicate ink work, but Byrne had a very heavy hand on his inking. Too many thick lines versus Terry Austin. I agree with that. Uh, Ghost Dog says that he's trash at painting. Well, definitely is something that requires uh, quite a bit of uh, practice to, to improve at. Kind of like, uh, I don't know, something like golf or that. You know, you can't just be good right out the gate no matter what you can have good instincts but uh, you need to get used to how certain paints um, react if that makes sense I think one of the tricks when you're drawing a transformer is sort of a balance between um, firm lines and sort of rounded edges to, you know, keep it from being too sort of angular and sharp, at least with the good guys, at least with the good guys. Need to sort of, I don't know, uh, they don't seem very real as characters if you make it too angular or they come across as kind of mean and dangerous so it's fine for Decepticons not so good for Autobots just my two cents I like to round a lot of the edges brushes are not recommended for transformers no I, I'm not gonna try to do too much with it Jay Andrew I'm just sort of trying to get some of the big outlines uh, and then I'll uh, switch to like various technical pens 
see how that works. Um, but this isn't necessarily the right approach. Uh, don't really know what would be. I heard that Venom actually, uh, financially, they it, it outperformed Sony's relatively modest expectations. So um, it really doesn't matter at this point, like what the critics thought or anything. Um, it's probably gonna probably gonna turn a profit. It's probably gonna do just fine. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's probably fine. I don't think that Marvel had any real ambition to utilize. Venom in like the MCU or anything so they were just like yeah Sony do whatever you want for now Let's see if there's any good questions in here. Bunch of new people. Uh, Karen G, Mikey Jesus, BMH6295. Plenty of people. I can't keep up. That's great. What artists are the biggest influences? Uh, mine are Eric Larson and Mark Bagley. That's Pathetic Spider Boy. I think I've said this a few times before. Um, Mike Mignola, Will Eisner, Alex Toth. Those are some of the big ones for me. Naoki Urasawa is a more recent one. I really admire his character design work. Wow, what a difference just uh, spotting some of the big lines makes. It's interesting. Uh, what's your opinion on the red hood? Mm, don't really have a huge opinion on it. Um, it's just that like when I was reading comics, uh, Jason Todd was killed in a pretty well done story. So uh, it was really weird when they brought him back to life versus with sort of... Um, you know, a very metaphysical type of thing. They didn't just say, like, he never really died, or even, like, something as simple as the Lazarus Pit. When when he, they brought him back, they were just like, Superboy Prime punched the universe so hard that it brought this character back to life. And I was just like, that is pretty weird. That is weird. Um, but whatever, he's back, and it looks like he's popular. I mean, he's... What, sort of like a, something like Vigilante or character kind of like that, maybe? I'm not an expert. Good news, almost done with my outlines. Uh, go, went a little faster than I expected, but that's good because I spent way too long probably with my pencils. Hmm. Crazy to hear Chris read my username. I've been around since like 3,000 subs and this is by far my favorite channel. Well, thank you. Please talk about Pitt and your opinion on him. Um, Boy, I'll be honest. I 
barely remember Pitt. I do remember artist Dale Keown, and I really uh, liked his work on the Hulk, and I did read Pitt back in the day. Um, I remember it was definitely a big deal when he came to Image because I he may have been the first non-Image founder to be allowed to publish a book with them. I think that that's the case. Am I going to color Mr. Prime? Uh, probably not, Chrissy, just because of time. Um, could be fun. I might do it later. Could be fun. Let's see. Software Agents TV says, I don't understand why Death in the Family involved some nonsense Iran in it. Um, yeah, that might seem a little strange. And it, choosing Iran was probably a weird uh, way to go. Uh, they, they probably just should have used one of DC's kind of many fictional countries just to uh, sort of have it more tonally okay. Um, it it um, Story-wise, Batman would instantly go after revenge at the, uh, on Joker at the, that point, but Joker was protected in, in, in a huge way, you know, by becoming a, um, an ambassador, <laughs> ambassador for Iran. Uh, and it was really a product of its times, that more than anything else, that, that idea. Um, <laughs> it, that, that piece didn't, like, age that well. It's not, like, I don't think it's necessarily offensive. It's just weird. And I don't know what more to say about it. Just have this ruler handy in case I need it. Uh... Yeah, let's see. Keon was an artist I feel was gone far too soon. Yeah, he, I, I guess that's true. What are my thoughts on the Bay Formers? Oh, yeah, like the Michael Bay movies. You know, like, I grew up loving Transformers. Just just huge, huge fan as a kid. Um, they were the first thing I really got myself into, like, uh, you know, around, like, second or third grade, somewhere around there. Uh... So, nostalgia plays a big part in Transformers for me. Like, I'll always sort of like them on some level, just because I grew up with them. You know, they hit at the right time. Um, all that said, I, I kind of can enjoy the first live-action Transformers movie, and I've really hated every other one. I've, I've just hated them. And I have foolishly gone to to see them um at this point you know i know that i'm not gonna like them uh and it makes me almost like kind of angry in a way that few nerdy things do just because you know i i've got that sort of um childhood nostalgia and passion for it and it's really not for me a hundred percent i mean they're trying to hit a very mainstream audience but um it just doesn't work for me at all like it just like every uh, every character in, in there is just so sort of angry and mean spirited, and there's just so much killing, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it's just weird seeing how angry even the Autobots come across. Like they just their personality is 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 very unlikable in my opinion, because they're just like always like just ripping enemies heads off and stuff and even fighting with each other they're like constantly squabbling and punching each other and stuff and it's just weird you're like these are the heroes that i'm supposed to like i don't really like them um yeah i don't really like any of those movies i i, I sort of can deal with the first one but after that it's it's i don't care for them I've just said, hey, it's not really for me, I guess. Is Dale Keown dead? Is he? I can't remember. 
He must be, right? Uh, yeah, Rasaku. Somebody asked me about the uh, Michael Bay Transformers. And I'm just not really a fan. Uh, I read a comic where Optimus Prime had a black truck as his vehicle for him. That was probably a version of Nemesis Prime. Probably. Any horror comics you would recommend that came out recently? Recently? Um, the only, like, semi-recent stuff I can think of is either um, Walking Dead or stuff by Junji Ito. It's about all I can think of. Uh, there's an echo in my audio. Yeah, I've got a terrible microphone. Um, not terrible. It's just only okay at best. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that right now. Um, maybe someday down the road I can afford something a little better. Or I can just be totally quiet. That probably wouldn't be a great solution. Um, tell you what, if the channel can get up to 2 million subscribers, I will pay the licensing fee to play music. All sorts of music. I have no idea what that would even cost, but I'd imagine you'd have to have a lot of subscribers to make it financially viable. Alright, uh, Wikipedia says Keon is alive. Oh, okay, good, good. But, um, I don't know why he's not working then. He must have, uh, moved into a different industry is all I can assume. He was, um... He was a really good Hulk artist, yeah. That was definitely like, maybe the high point of Peter David's run, is with Dale Keown. And uh, you know, Peter David worked with several really good artists. I think that uh, Mark Farmer also uh, gave him a lot of uh, good issues. Um, and there's a lot of like fun artists in there, like Todd McFarlane and um, Oh, it's hard to remember now going back like that. Um, but there were a lot of great artists during Peter David's long, long run on Hulk. And, uh, yeah, but Dale Keown was uh, one of the best, no question. Really suited that character in a special way. How late am I? Not very late. I've only been going for a little over 20 minutes. Welcome, Buona Beast. Just sort of doodling a, an Optimus Prime that's maybe a little weary, taking a knee. In a word, he's exhausted. be able to even finish this whole thing folks I am so much more tired than I thought I was and I don't want to be I'm trying to um, have some energy I am having fun I enjoy talking to you I enjoy drawing I'm just uh, my mind it, it just keeps sort of shutting down almost
Go draw comics professionally. Who's that aimed at? Came from yesterday's archive video to today's live stream. That's kind of fun. Uh, I never got into Transformers. The cartoons didn't air in the 90s too much. Yeah, definitely more of uh, an 80s thing. And uh, so it landed at the right time for me. Um, in retrospect, the animation was hit and miss, but they did have plenty of episodes that were really well animated. And uh, so that spoke to me. That excited me. Um, and they had some great voice actors. Some really memorable ones. Optimus Prime still doesn't sound right to me unless it's Peter Cullen. And I really miss getting to hear uh, Frank Welker as characters like Soundwave and Megatron. Uh, I mean, obviously he's still working plenty in voice acting. I just uh, miss him hearing him as those characters. For my own edification, I'm going to completely do all the inking on um, Optimus Prime's head because I just, uh, if I leave that halfway done, it just uh, isn't going to feel right to me. So I, I want to sort of get that out of the way. Out of the way sounds like it's um, an obligation. And it's not. I just I just want to see what it looks like. Um, but this ink is uh, stays wet for a moment, so I'm just sort of using a little cloth here to keep my um, keep my finger from smudging it. Oh, by the way, even though it's only been seven days, uh, I guess I've been drawing enough lately that uh, my artist's callus is starting to come back. So that that's kind of cool. Um, you can almost sort of see that this area here is kind of like red. So like um, my uh, fingertip and this area are starting to get calloused. Like right in here, it's getting calloused. <laughs> so uh, I kind of like it when, when I have my artist callous. It makes me just feel like I'm an actual artist. Uh, anybody that draws a bunch will know what I'm talking about. It's not that it necessarily feels good, but it does feel right. See, Karen says, I feel the same way. I have some on my left hand, my drawing hand, and on my right hand, my mouse hand. Yeah. <laughs> no Justice, No Peace asks, did anyone here watch Goldorak? I don't know what that is. Asmin Siza says, for someone without a mouth, a top-rate voice is pretty important for Prime. Right? Uh, anyway. And a bunch of people are... Uh, talking about some of their favorite like mechs and their favorite anime and stuff like that that's awesome I like it when people talk about that kind of stuff share compare contrast good even though I smudged a little it looks like uh, it was light enough that uh, the ink will basically erase so that that's good okay I'll come back to that later after it's had even more time to to dry up. <laughs> 
what um what have you all done recently ish that makes you feel proud because i'm talking about sort of being proud to have like you know a callus an artist's callus uh what's something that you're just you know it, it's very personal to you but you feel you take pride in it i'd be curious to hear Have I ever worked in comics before? Asks David Patrick. Um, I mean a little. It depends on exactly what you mean. Um, I haven't worked for Marvel or DC. Uh, hopefully that's fairly obvious. Uh, hopefully? I'm just saying it probably is obvious. Um, I've worked as a proofreader for, you know, The Walking Dead and all of Robert's stuff, really. Uh, Robert Kirkman's stuff since he was self-publishing Battle Poe. Um, it's not really being in comics, but it's being connected to comics in some way. Uh, I've illustrated and written all sorts of self-published indie comics, lots of those, um, all sorts of genres, just to sort of experiment and get used to every role in comics. Uh, and then um, I've, I've illustrated like... A, a small handful of educational comics, I'll call them, that you can find in places like Barnes and Noble and Amazon and stuff like that. So I haven't like worked in comics uh, on the same level that you know uh, a full-time professional does, but I've worked in it and worked closely enough with others to have a pretty good understanding of how the industry and every specific role operates. Chrissy says, I went to a party all by myself with nobody to hide in the corner of the room with. <laughs> uh, Chris, this is Software Agents TV, says, I hope someday you can do something for DC. Uh, I'd be happy to I'd, if I get to a point where I can uh, pitch uh, to a publisher or an editor I, I'm sure I'd have plenty of ideas I always have plenty of story ideas some written out some just uh, mapped out a little bit and uh, coming up with ideas isn't the hard part and really even the writing isn't the hard part the work is really just being willing to rewrite so that it gets as good as possible. Uh, that's sort of where the work comes in, um, but I don't mind doing any of that. There's much harder jobs out there. I've got an interesting question. Um, we talk so much about comics. Sometimes we talk about tangentially related things, but um. What's a YouTube channel you enjoy that's not comic book related? That Because that's something I could potentially give a shot. Like, you know, I, I very much try not to look at a existing uh, YouTube channels that review or discuss comics because I don't want to be influenced. But um, what are some non-comics YouTube channels that people like? Because I really do love just watching stuff on YouTube. I'll watch how-to tutorials, I'll watch news, I'll watch commentary, um, watch a fair amount of stuff that reviews movies, because um, I love storytelling in general. So I love YouTube. Always looking for a recommendation there. And I'll look up in just a moment to see what, if any, comments there are to respond to my hypothetical or my question, I should say. So, let's see here. Um, yes. All right, let's see. Um, 
Crash Course, Cinemasker, sure. The Michael Brooks Show, don't know that one. I'll try to keep that. Mr. Top Ten List, possibly because I edit for it. Yeah, that might bias you a little. <laughs> Kill Tony, number one live podcast in the world. Uh, Damon X Machina is coming out for Switch. Um, David Crabtree says that he's currently illustrating and writing a graphic novel called Cyber Max. Well, that sounds interesting. Good luck with that. Uh, what else? TPM Vids is a good channel if you like Disney-related things. Yeah, I guess I might a little bit. That, that's an interesting idea. Bearded Pop Hunter is a funny dude. He collects Funko Pops. Oh, wow. Um, I don't collect those. I, I don't even know if I have more than like three of those Funko Pops. But um, I'm not against them. I just don't want to like get into that like uh, rabbit hole of collecting. But um, their main headquarters is uh, not far from where I live. It's up in Everett, Ma um, Everett Washington. And I have been to it before, and it's a really fun, cool store. Its, uh, it's presentation is top-notch. It has, it's big. It has a lot of different areas, and each one has sort of got massive statues of, uh, like, that area. Like, there's a Star Wars area that feels like you're on Planet Hoth. There's a Marvel superheroes area that feels like you're in sort of a New York City street area. Um, Harry Potter. Um, I want to say like Frozen maybe was something that was there. I can't quite remember now. But um, it was a really impressive store. And then they have like a make your own Funko Pop so that you could just sort of make either something weird or make yourself. Uh, so that was fun. So while I'm not a huge Funko Pop collector or anything, I was very impressed with their store. And if you ever come to Washington, I actually do recommend, if you're into the, them, going to see the actual store. It's impressive. Wow, thank you, Juggernaut44. Very, very kind of you. I like that. Uh, a super chat. Much appreciated. Thank you. That's really, really cool. That that helps. That helps a lot. I don't know why I'm sort of focusing on Optimus Prime's torso so much right now. I just sort of feel like uh, that's that's the area that demanded the attention from me. Maybe it's because it's not overly complex and I feel like I could sort of bang out some of the details. Uh, I don't love how I did it, but it works. Yeah, it works. <clears throat> uh, hello, Mandela Butterfly. Hello, Vid Alliger. Um, Digivon Miles. Watch Mojo is a nice channel to watch if you like top ten list and background noise while you're drawing. Um, yeah, I could see the appeal there. Um, top 10 lists don't really do it for me unless they're especially weird and funny and they're more just poking fun at the format. Um, but, um, I do, I'm not against it. It's just not always for me, but I do enjoy, um, just having something playing while I draw that I like very, very much. Uh, it's just that I'll typically have something more like, uh, news playing
let's see. Uh, I'm writing a graphic novel that's like the Punisher meets Blade Runner. The Punisher meets Blade Runner called Red Sea. Okay, well, that's cool. Good. I like uh, when people write their own stuff, that's for sure. Um, good luck with that. I mean it. See if I've got another. Uh, I'm gonna switch to a different number one liner to see if this one does any better. I feel like uh, my other guy's dying on me a little. Yeah, this is working better already. Actually, I, I might have said that too fast. It was giving me a nice thick line, but uh, might be running out of ink. Thing about Inktober is you will go through uh, pens and brushes and stuff really fast. Uh, yeah. No way around it. <laughs> the original one. Uh, good evening, Zan Moff. How are you? Peter Stat, I'm going to have you playing while I draw. Then we'll be drawing together, Peter. Uh, nice to see so many people. Whoa, I just got exhausted. I love all the different ways people interpret the prompts. Yeah. What kind of music do you like, Chris? Um, I would say in general, like, rock. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely like... Um, well, I mean, it'll be showing my age. I like 80s New Wave. I like 90s Grunge and Alternative. Um, what do I listen to today? Because I just, I mean, I love classic, like, you know, hip-hop from the 80s and stuff. Like, some of my favorite bands are going to be, like, Foo Fighters or Beastie Boys. So, um, I'm probably a little dated now that that's what I'm talking about. But there are still groups that I listen to today. Um, I, I listen to plenty of stuff from the past as well. I'm just trying pulling out my phone to see like what kind of maybe new songs I've uh, from like new artists. I'm just not as good at remembering new artists because I don't talk about them with people as much as I used to talk about music when I was in high school and college and so on. So I still try to like listen to stuff. It's just that um, I don't talk about it as much so sometimes I forget. All right, so like I don't know that Eminem is necessarily like hip and modern, but I do still listen to Eminem and uh, I like Post Malone these days. Um, what else do I listen to that's like more recent? Um, sometimes I'll listen to like Broadway show tunes. I really like Hamilton. Like I, I've got that here on my so like recently played music. Um, and a lot of this stuff is like from the 70s and 80s and that, but I'm trying to look for more... Um, recent stuff that I still listen to. I don't know. Um, I just haven't been listening to a lot of um, modern stuff lately, I guess. I guess I was listening to uh, Young the Giant. I like Young the Giant. They're pretty good. I was listening to X Ambassadors a little bit. Don't know if I'll stick with them, but they weren't bad. So, uh, yeah. Um... Arcade Fire I still listen to. Band of Forces. I don't know. Those are just a few. Uh, Megadeth and Def Lover. Yeah, I mean, I could, like, rattle off tons of older stuff that I listen to. Uh, e. Nashton says, Hi, Chris. Just wanted to say that I found out you have a little following in Russia. Really? Like, <laughs> wouldn't, would not have guessed that. Um... 
I'll be honest. Um, I would love to visit like something like St. Petersburg to see the architecture and, and, and understand Russian culture better. Um, our relations with Russia these days are pretty strained, I would say. Um, I don't love what they're doing with the Ukraine. But um, aside from all that, like uh, I'd be tremendously curious what kind of comic books, uh, if any, they either import or make in Russia. Because um, I try to read up on comic books from like all, every country. And uh, most countries obviously don't make them, or even a lot of them don't even import them. But um, I would be curious what is popular for comic books in Russia. That would be fascinating to learn. The guy from Hamilton is from a group called Clapping, a pretty interesting hip-hop group. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I remember uh, Sigmund's, uh, when, when Lin-Manuel Miranda debuted the Hamilton rap uh, before there was ever the uh, musical as well. It was, it was, I was like, that sounds cool. Oh, Mikey Jesus, thank you so much. Let's see. Have I ever read Ed Piscor's Hip Hop Family Tree? I have not. I, I, I keep meaning to. Uh, obviously, very, very well reviewed and respected. Well, well respected, well reviewed, um, but I haven't read it yet. Um, I need to. I need to. Um, that said, like since you ask, Mikey, have you read it? And if so, do you like it? Uh, that would that would be interesting to know. Oh, geez, some of these brushes I have are just dead. They're just they're just gone. Let's see, what's this one? Oh, that's my school gym. My tech tech. Yeah, this one might work. Let me ask this. If you could go on a tour in any comic book publisher today, not like in the past or anything, no, no time travel, but if you were able to get just a sort of a visitor's pass to see how any comic book publisher operated, you could talk to anyone that worked there, uh, who would it be? Would it be Marvel or DC? Would it be something like uh, from Japan? Would it be Valiant or maybe something smaller like Fantagraphics? Uh, tell me, if you could right now get permission to go visit any comic book publisher in the world, who would it be and why? I'd be very curious to, to know especially the whys. Let's see what answers I get. Uh, Sigamig says Image or Oni. Sure. See, I don't think that, like, uh, Image would actually necessarily have a lot to do. They've got a very small, lean operation for the most part. Um, but but it could be interesting still to just see what get what comes through. I can, I can understand and respect that a lot. Uh, what else do we have for answers here? Um, jump, says Karen G. Totally agree. I'd go to Japan and, and I would love to visit Jump. Uh, Wannabe says DC, but I worry about meeting the people. I think politics has become really bad for the big two. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, but okay, that, that's that's totally a fair concern. Uh, Brian A says, I'd like to go to Scout Comics. They are a smaller group, but they're kind of local to me. It's good reason. Um, yeah. Javon says Image or Marvel or Viz Media. I get that. J. Andrew World said, I would like to visit studios like Homage Studios uh, more than a publisher cause unless they have a bullpen. That's fair if you're interested. Like, and, and I get it. That, but I specifically was like trying to also like limit it to, so that um, people weren't just trying to pick a time when um, like Marvel had like a super famous bullpen of artists. But uh Uh, it, totally fair, 
totally fair choice to say that you'd rather visit a studio. Um, I get it. I have a question. Why is Gamora? <laughs> okay. Good question. Why is Gamora? Kodansha comics. That could be very interesting as well. And any excuse I could have to uh, go to Japan, I would take. So uh, I, I could very well see myself choosing a, a Japanese publisher, but who knows? Yeah, you can assume that like free travel is involved here if that is what influences your decision. Uh, so if you're like, ah, oh, I've always wanted to visit the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> maybe that'll influence uh, which publisher you choose, for instance. Anyway, cool answers. Thanks, folks. Appreciate you uh, playing along with my hypothetical. If you could have a lunch and like just talk for however long, you know, a nice leisurely lunch lasted with any uh, not living comic book writer or artist, who would you choose for something like that? You can talk to any anybody who's worked in comics that is deceased. You could have a, a nice leisurely lunch and chat with them and they wouldn't like uh, show you up. You know, they're, they're, they're going to they're, they're gonna show up. Like even if you choose somebody like Steve Dicko for this, he'd show up. Because what's he got to do now that he's dead? <laughs> I choose Stanley. Okay, so oh, Jack Kirby, right? A um, bunch of people saying Jack Kirby. I'm watching Frasier on Netflix. Is he still big in Seattle? Yeah, Sheldon. Uh, most of us do dress up as either Frasier or Niles each day. And by way of greeting each other, instead of just saying hello in a traditional handshake, we usually say, Hey baby, I hear the music all in, toss salads and scrambled eggs. That's just how we greet one another. Uh, yeah, I know, pathetic spider boy, that Stan is alive. Uh, Will Eisner, Bern Hogarth, nice. Karen G with some nice deep pulls. Uh, somebody said Len Wein, another person said Bernie Wrightson, great. Lots of people choosing Jack Kirby. Don't blame them at all. Oh, cool. Uh, Asmund Caesar says, Kazuke Kazooie, I forget his, how to pronounce his name, but the uh, creator of Lone Wolf and Cub. Uh, Walt Kelly, Carl Barks, Len Wein, Harlan Ellison. Yep, he, he touched a few comic books. Uh, J. Andrew World says, Stanley is dead. No, no, he's very much alive. I was being, I was kidding around. Frank Fr excuse me. Frank Frazetta, Al Williamson. Wow, look at all these interesting choices. Wow. Michael Turner. Hmm. Is it true Stan Lee's daughter has abused him? Sigmings will probably never know the full story of what's going on there. We'll probably never know. I've had drinks with Bernie Wrightson and Will Eisner. Not at the same time. Dude, that's amazing. That's amazing. You should write up uh, exactly what those experiences were. Lots of people would love to uh, see that. Michael Turner. Michael Turner, I remember, um, was playing pool right behind my friends and I. And um, I, I didn't, I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't know him. And like when he'd have his back turned to me and almost be bumping me with his pool cue, I'd, like mine, like I was going to hit him with my pool cue, um, which made my friends laugh. Cool story, right? What a great story. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yeah, I, I, I did sell a car today. Don't worry. No pick here.
So we're in October. I love horror. I won't tell you what I've got coming up for comic tropes, but just keep that in mind. It's October, and I like horror. I considered Venom a little bit of horror. Just a little bit. Does Carmax pay by the car or total dollars? I'm not quite 100% sure what that means, but um, I'm also not, I, I don't think I have permission to um, break down exactly how we get paid, so sorry, I'm not going to get into it. I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to talk about it or I can get in trouble. Bernie Wrightson was doing a talk at the Words and Pictures Museum. Afterwards, he was talking to me and some other people when a British guy explodes out of the museum. Are you talking a physical explosion or like he had diarrhea or, or what kind of explosion do you mean? Huh. I hope it wasn't an actual explosion, but I don't think so because I think I would have heard about that. I'm drawing really slowly tonight, I just realized. Um, I think it's a combination of several things. One, I'm a little tired. Two, you guys are actually asking some really interesting questions. And three, um, there's so much technical detail on Optimus that it's like, yeah, it's, it's intimidating to, to think about diving deep into any one area. So instead of like getting intimidated by looking at the whole piece, I should really be focusing on small areas after I've uh, blocked out the big shapes. That's probably the approach that would make the most sense. I'm going to sneeze again. Ah. <coughs> uh. um, James Gleason says, Cool Optimus Prime. Can't wait to see it when it's finished. Well, you know what? Uh, fact is, there's a, there's a chance I won't finish. I, I'm really just... Uh, I sketch out whatever I sketch out, and then um, during Inktober, uh, for like the live stream portion, I guess I should say, um, I'm just trying to do as about as much as I, I can, and um, uh, after about an hour or so, I'm going to have to call it quits just because I've got so many other things going on, uh, including making the comic tropes show, so it's really more just about how much inking can I accomplish within about an hour? That's sort of the goal every day. Uh, in which case I should not really be dawdling. should be uh, banging this stuff out so that it uh, can it look can at least be close to finished. Like yesterday I, I didn't finish uh, uh, Lockjaw's feed or uh, the legs of uh, Black Bolt. Um, but I was like, eh, you get where it's going. Because none of this is like getting published or anything, you know, so I'm just sort of doing it for my own benefit. I don't even know what I'll end up ultimately like doing with all these pieces when I'm when we hit the end of the month. Last year I offered them up to my patrons. I just said like, hey, first come, first serve, I'll mail these out to like anybody that wants them. And I mailed at least most of them out, but um I'm in a good place now where I've got a lot more patrons and I just don't think I could afford to mail out like 30 pieces. That could get very expensive. So these are basically practice, which means unfortunately someday they will become scrap pieces of paper to do things like, you know, write out my 
expenses for the month or write down <laughs> the names of people that are getting uh, entered into the Gachapon prize of the week for the show and then cut them all up into little pieces or kindling for a Christmas fire. Maybe something like one of those. Do a raffle. Um, I, I wish I could. I, I, I should hold a raffle. What, like, and somebody wins just all of them? Just give away, like, 30 drawings to one person? Is that what you guys mean? Um, I don't know that, 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 like, that would necessarily lead to them going to somebody that appreciated them. Like, they might appreciate one. I don't know if somebody wants 30 pieces by me. Or maybe I'm not interpreting the uh, suggestion properly, in which case I apologize for being dopey. If you could instantly know how to speak one foreign language you wouldn't have to like study or anything you just all of a sudden know it fluently what single language would you choose and why Japanese, Chinese for business, simple. Japanese, how about if someone wants one, we can do a $10 super chat. Um, I, you know, like, honestly, that's still, like, that, that, that's nice, but it would really just sort of, like, cover the cost of shipping plus maybe a tiny bit more. And the problem also is just, like, you know, then I have to find the time to get to the post office and I'm having enough trouble mailing out the gachapon prizes on time. Um, it's been way more of a challenge than I uh, anticipated. Um, I thought I'd have, you know, a Monday to Friday, nine to five type job like I always had when I started this, but that's not the schedule I work. So quite challenging to um, get stuff mailed out in a timely manner um, so let me take this moment if any of you out there are winners uh, I apologize for how, how slow I am to mail those out um, I promise that I will just a question of uh, when I have the time And I hate saying that, but I am really strapped for time these days. Um, that's another part of why I'm not reading a ton of current comic books. I just, uh, I don't know when I'd have the time. All right, but um, let's see, some other, WinFu, Linux, Italian. These are languages people would, would love to instantly be able to know if you could learn one instantly. Basque, Japanese, a lot of people. Car business takes so, so much of your time. Yep. It does want to, um, and unfortunately, that's just the uh, the only option I have in front of me to, to pay the bills. So, mm, definitely did, don't agree with you there, pathetic Spider Boy. I think Marvel's putting out plenty of good comics. Um, they're, they're probably not at like uh, their all time highest creative point, but they're far from their worst. They're far from their worst. Yeah, I don't think Marvel's putting out garbage. I don't know where you get that. Hmm. 
You know what I haven't had time to do yet uh, this weekend is see uh, what kind of announcements uh, all the big publishers made at uh, New York Comic Con this past uh, weekend in terms of like what big names they're putting on uh, their biggest titles and what their what their events are and things like that. I'm curious. Very curious what's uh, coming up. New Universe was Marvel's worst. Yeah, I don't know if I'd even say that personally. I, I, I think that there was a... Uh, I think that their worst was probably the... Um, probably there's some stuff in the 90s just because they were putting out way too many titles and there just wasn't enough talent to work on all the books. There was still plenty of really good stuff coming out then, but they were putting out some really bad stuff just because they didn't have enough... Uh, talent for how many titles they were trying to spam the marketplace with and that literally was their business plan was they were just trying to put out so many titles that they would like get the most shelf space and potentially put their competition out of business that way uh it didn't really pay off for them at all it sort of put them in bankruptcy <laughs> so I would say that was probably their lowest because they're far from bankruptcy these days. Now, if anything, you know, they're, 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 they're selling just fine. It's uh, the industry overall just needs to attract more readers. Um, and the only way you can do that is by reaching out to potential new groups of readers. I mean, the, the best selling comics these days are all like uh, the young adult stuff that's aimed honestly like at like a, uh, Mostly girls and young readers, because th those are uh, published in books at um, places like Target and Walmart and stuff. So anything by somebody like, you know, Raina Telgemeier, that's the most popular comics out there these days. And after that, it's manga. DC and Marvel are a very, very distant uh, competitor to that kind of stuff. Okay, some uh, questions. The 90s are better than now. Mm, I don't know how you figure. There's a lot of really talented people out there these days, in my opinion. I think that there's some just amazing stuff. Uh, well, I don't have time to like engage in a debate. I'm, I'm drawn and just trying to take light questions. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'm on the same page with you there. So who out there has plans to go to some sort of upcoming convention? It doesn't even necessarily have to be a comics convention, but just any kind of convention. What do, what do you got for conventions? So I can't stop thinking about them since New York Comic Con was this past weekend. It's just really on my mind. What, um, what conventions do you intend to go to right now? Anybody? I'm going to the Houston Arcade Expo on October 19th at Software Agents. All right, that sounds fun. Vienna Comic Con is coming up here. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I would love to go to a convention right about now. I'm just in the mood. I 
want to discover some uh, passion projects by people in Artist Alley, something like that. That would, that would float my boat. some other conventions that people are talking about um, uh, Fayetteville Comic Con in North Carolina that sounds fun uh, I only go to cons in town Snydle Bridge Comic Con is ours and it already happened this year okay um, I'm participating in Artist Alley in a few upcoming conventions. That's David Crabtree. Awesome. There's going to be a tiny Comic-Con at Tacoma Downtown Library next weekend. I heard about that. That's very cool. I wish I had it off. Um, yeah, what else? There's, uh... Okay, and after that, people are just getting hung up on um, all sorts of stuff that, like... No, I don't know. I'm not sure I see too many informed opinions arguing the case very effectively, so I'm, I'm not going to get involved in it right now. Um, just trying to talk about something we could all get on the same page about. But, let's see, have I been going an hour? I've been going over an hour, so... Eh, if things are falling apart, that, that's probably because people are getting a little bored. So, I'll just do a couple more details and uh, call it. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask any uh, final questions and I will do my best to address them. Uh, feel you, can, you might need to ask more than once if I don't catch it, but uh, hit me up with any questions and I'll probably wrap this up in the next several minutes. Just do a little bit more inking on the top torso here. Probably do a hand. And after I do the hand, we'll say that that's, uh, that's what I got accomplished for the day, which is only average. But I might come back to this like on a uh, just like a separate day after October and wrap it up on another live stream because I, I do kind of like the layout here and the idea. I just uh, don't really have... Uh, enough time to, to adequately ink this whole piece. Too bad. I was hoping I would. All right, let's see. Favorite soda? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Um, mostly because of uh, just the, the caffeine in it, but I, I kind of like um, fruit tastes, and this has that. Uh, for Inktober, do you only do prompts or themes? Um, I, I, I use the prompt as a loose guideline for where I'm going to start, uh, but I don't feel obligated to stick with it if I've got an idea that I just want to draw that day. Sure, Jay Andrew World, definitely email me about the, the uh, stories that you've got there. I'll do my best to uh, take a close look. That sounds cool. What are your thoughts on the Bumblebee movie? Um, honestly, the trailer definitely does look like a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I do feel like, okay, how many times have the live action movies failed me or tricked me? At least four. You know, I might give that first one a little bit of a pass. But, uh, should I fall for it one more time just because of a trailer that looks good? I don't know. I don't know. But the trailer does look good. The trailer does look good. It looks good visually. And Haley Steinfeld is a good uh, actress, so so that's, that's a decent choice there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know what? It'll probably just come down to, like, do I have some free time? If I do, I'll just take a chance 
and if I'm too busy, then I'll just sort of wait for uh, wait for it to come out on something like Netflix. Fun question, relevant to what I'm drawing, so appreciate that. What non-Marvel or DC character would you like to see get a movie? Hmm. Hellboy, <laughs> but he is. Um, so if not Hellboy, we'll just say Dylan Dog. Uh, uh, same idea. What non-Marvel or DC character would I like to see get adapted? Um, anything by Ed Brubaker. Um, I guess Sleeper wouldn't count these days because it's owned by DC, but uh, anything, any of the criminal stories would make awesome movies. Um, what else would be good? I don't know, nothing else is coming to me off the top of my head that hasn't already been adapted, basically. Um, Why the Last Man could be good. Um, probably better as a TV show. And I think that they're trying to make that happen. I'm not as up to date on that as I should be. Favorite non-superhero premise for a comic? Hellboy. Uh, I wouldn't call him a superhero. Um... What else do I like? Um, Monster by Naoki Urasawa. The favorite cheese. Uh, where do I order my pizza from? I don't. I don't order out anymore, man. I don't. I. That sounds like a luxury. Ooh, ordering a pizza. Wow. That sounds like a luxury. Uh, nope. Haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> um, favorite cheese. I'm not a huge cheese guy, I guess. Let me think. Um, what would my favorite cheese be? Maybe like... Mm, sorry, I'm thinking. Maybe pepper jack? I like pepper jack. I like something with a little bit of a spiciness to it. We'll just go with that for now because I can't think of anything better. But I do like American cheese a lot. I can't eat a lot of cheese th these days. That's probably why I'm having trouble uh, thinking of it. Um, I'm fairly lactose intolerant, so I always have to take um, medicine if I'm going to have some uh, cheese. So, oh, I know. Excuse me. It's mozzarella. It is mozzarella. I love mozzarella. But um, there are lots of times where I just can't have it. All right, what other things? Rainy Shack says, hi, Comic Tropes. I finally caught a stream, but it's too late, and I have to go to bed. Well, I won't be taking too much longer, so that, that's totally fair. Never tried Calvin and Hobbes pizza. Should I? Of course. Absolutely. Um, Nexus by Taika Waititi. Hmm, that could be interesting. Did I read Mignola's Rocket Raccoon miniseries back in the day? Uh, no, no, I didn't. That was one of his early pieces, wasn't it? Um, no, I had no reason to have much faith in uh, Rocket Raccoon anything back then, though. Wasn't it like Abnett and Lanning that sort of brought him back for Guardians of the Galaxy where Rocket finally sort of started being uh, not necessarily just a silly little jokey character and they actually gave him a serious role in the Marvel Universe and up until then he I mean I know he was in Hulk but that was still pretty cartoony stuff
All right, I'm almost done. Almost. Are there any last questions? Favorite female comic book character? Mm. Well, when I was a kid, it was definitely one of the X-Men and it would sort of bounce around. I always liked Storm because she was a powerful leader, but I also sort of like related a little bit more to like some of the new mutants or Kitty Pride, like, um, I always found, found Eliana Rasputin pretty interesting back then. But that was when I was a kid. Then when I got older, um, I started finding nonfiction a little more interesting. So somebody like Marjan Sartrapi in um, her Persepolis duology is a pretty fascinating uh, protagonist. Hmm. Uh, did you get a chance to see the My Hero Academia movie while it was showing? Nope, nope. Haven't. I only watched even a couple episodes of like the um, cartoon. I'm, I'm not as into that. Um, I, I really like the manga. Haven't watched a lot of the um, anime or anything. Not super knowledgeable about that. Just about wrapped up on this hand. And then we'll uh, we'll call the stream. <laughs> Sounds like it's dying. Call the stream. Um I need to do a lot more work on this, uh, but it ain't the time for it. Another day, another day, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, boom, boom, for the future. Whoa, Sand Sanity, uh, wow, that is, that's probably a good way to end the stream, right? With that, let's see, was there a question attached to that? Uh, let's take a quick look. No, just, just for the sake of being nice, a $20 super chat, well, that's very, very much appreciated. Thanks for the streams recently. Hey, it's been my pleasure talking to all of you, just getting a chance to work on, uh, on these things. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot still to do on this particular one. Uh, this taught me a few things. When it comes to like very technical illustration, you know, you have to have a certain set of uh, tools ready to deal with it um, because the brush pens really weren't going to be the right tool. It would just be too muddy if I if I did that. But um, I need like a bunch of new, fresh technical pens because you're going to go through them. You're going to th go through them fast. Now I do have things like some quills th that are pretty fine and I do have some uh, brushes that could have worked. So that's something to think about. Did I watch the original Teen Titans series? I did not. Sorry. Transformers versus GoBot 2 wins? Transformers. <laughs> Uh, would I ever draw an actual comic, like just a few panels with a joke? I've done tons of them. Um, uh, I used to do this series on a um, website that I sort of ran with my friend, and uh, it was called like Star Trek Problems. It would be like just jokes, like three to four panel strips set in the Star Trek universe. I did hundreds of those. Uh, so anyway, wow, thank you, Sam Sanity. Thank you again. That's really generous. Um, thank you, everybody.
do I have a public Amazon list? No, never thought of doing anything like that. I don't want to like feel like I'm begging. Um, I really appreciate the donations. They, they help a lot, especially these days lately. But um, Joseph's saying, can you teach me how to ink? You're so good. I, do, listen, I can like do something and we can see what I'm doing right. And we can also see plenty that I'm doing wrong. Um, and, I, and I see a lot that I'm doing wrong. Um, I can talk about it sometime maybe, but I don't think I'd be the best teacher for inking. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to work on my speed and get more comfortable with my tools, etc. I, I sound really low and far. I'll try to get a better microphone than, than what I've got here. This isn't the best. I know that you guys have had to crank me up when you're streaming. Um, doing the best I can for now. Um, I do own a nicer USB microphone, but I haven't used it since we moved across the country a few years ago. So, unfortunately, it's in a box that we just, uh, my fiance and I have not been able to locate yet, uh, which, you know, there's not that many boxes to go through, but it, it's got to be in one that we just, you know, maybe put in the basement underneath some other stuff and didn't realize it. Uh, Amazon list is tax free and you can put some household needs on it. No, 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 no. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't ask for stuff like that. I, I just couldn't. I, 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 it would make me feel bad. Um, if you want to support me, like, you know, through Patreon or something, then I at least sort of feel like I'm giving something back to a degree because I try to have the occasional polls or release an episode early, uh, you know, private blog posts. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I try to give a little something back instead of just taking. I, 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 I'm just not comfortable just asking for, for money for, for nothing. Um, let's see. Somebody asked what the theme is for tomorrow. Excellent question. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling that up. I'm uh, looking at the prompts. I do not know. What, it, what do we have? All right. So I pulled this up, and it looks like day eight says star. Star. Started to sound like Jeff Goldblum there. Uh, uh, star. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, mm. Okay. Um, you send us toilet paper. Let us send you some. That's fun. Star man. Uh, star, 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 star. Patrick Starfish. I'll be honest. I'm. I'm leaning a little bit towards something from Star Wars, and not necessarily a character, maybe a vehicle, but then again, I just sort of did something very technical, so I gotta think that through. Um, let me give that some thought. You know, maybe maybe Star Lord, um, maybe just a space scene with somebody like Galactus. Um, could sort of like do some some work with like you know against the black background with some whiteout for. For stars, that, that's, a, that, that's a different type of technique. So let me think about it. There's a lot of different directions we could go with the prompt for star, the death star, maybe. Make it simple, silly. Yeah, I could, you know what? I could do just sort of more of a, a cartoon uh, one of these days. That's, that's true. I hadn't thought of that. Mario holding a star after beating Bowser. Solaris, the tyrant's son. Uh, was that from... All Star Superman. Am I remembering that correctly? Because I got that 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 sounds recognizable, and I'm just trying to remember where it came from. It probably came from All Star Superman, but it could be something like Doctor Who. Okay, it was All Star Superman. Good. Uh, yeah, All Star Superman. By the way, folks, that's a pretty fantastic, complete story. That um, just 12 issues. Great story. Great art. I highly recommend it. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite uh, Superman stories out there. Star Brand, yeah, good. All right. Either way, um, it's been a very long day for me. Hope you understand that I didn't have the energy to uh, just go 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 until this was all the way done. I started blocking out a bunch of it. You know, like even if we just sort of cropped it there, you can sort of get a sense of sort of an exhausted optimist, right? And you can see with the pencil drawing where I was going, I hope. 
I'm going to call it. Uh, thank you all for the questions. Thank you for the super chats. And uh, thank you for the support, like watching the, the episodes and stuff. Hope uh, everybody here has had a chance to watch the new episode I uploaded uh, today, Sunday. Uh, Venom. Talk about Venom. Uh, and we've got some horror stuff coming up for the rest of this month. So got some, some stuff I'm personally very excited to discuss. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, keep reading comics. Take care.